Hello, welcome to the Man of the Match show for Ipswich Town, nil Everton 2. Great result for the Toffees on their travels at the weekend. Our first away win in over 10 months and it feels good to be talking about a victory. And um, it was a good performance overall from Everton, really. I think they were in control of the game for most parts of it. I think the last 20 we took our foot off the gas a little bit and allowed Ipswich back on, and that's a dangerous game to play. Of course, it is. If they were, if they would have got one back, then it might have been a different outcome. But they didn't, and we kept a clean sheet, back to back clean sheets. Now I think that'll delight the manager. Uh, it certainly delighted the Evertonians who made the long trip to Ipswich and were rewarded uh, with a great performance and a great result. Uh, the man of the match, oh, quite simply. I pick a man at the match with my eyes after a game uh, and then I have a look at all the numbers and see whether or not my eyes lied to me or whether they didn't. And this Saturday, there was two or three who I thought could have got the man at the match. Uh, but I actually gave it to Michael Keane. I thought Michael Keane, you know, was much maligned at times, but I thought he had a really good game at the weekend. Also come up with an absolute tremendous goal, didn't he? What a finish that was from Michael Keane. Brilliant, brilliant goal deserved the uh, the the songs, the keynote chants and all that because it was a brilliant finish. He actually scored last time we won an away game, which was Burnley, December 2023. Keane scored in a 2-0 win. So there you go, little omens there from Michael Keane. But he took his goal really well. And I think overall, for me, uh, had... You know, had a, had a good, solid game. I think Tarkovsky looked much better alongside them as well as in looking like he's getting back up to form. He has been playing, obviously, with a back injury and with a glute problem, apparently. Uh, so he's not quite been his normal dominant self. But I thought on Saturday he was better, much, much better. And like I say, Keane alongside him had a really good game as well. So if we have a look at Michael Keane's overall stats from the game, we can see there's his heat map there. Uh, Passing accuracy, 90%. Uh, one goal, won one out of two of his ground duels. Completed seven clearances uh, and tackles one. And I think in general, I think in general overall, he, you know, the goal obviously finishing it the way he did with that left foot strike into the roof of the net was tremendous. But we know in that, that penalty area he's a brilliant finisher he just is he, he's so calm in that area um which some, sometimes there's a little bit of a contrast in the other box but he took it brilliantly but on Saturday just look calm and assured I thought most of the game if not all of the game no real issues with him obviously lots of talk about Jared Branthwaite is he fit and all that and Sean Dyche has come out afterwards and said he could have probably played Branthwaite wanted to give him a little bit longer and Keane Keane kept his place, and it's all about that. That's what has to happen with a squad. The lads who come in have to make it really difficult for the manager to change it for the next game. Now, I know it goes game by game, and I know in most cases, managers will bow to who is the better player overall. Jared Brantwaite is better than Michael Keane. That's why one's being chased by some top clubs. But Keane's done himself no, no, you know, no harm whatsoever. Solid performance, great goal. And if that means Brantwaite has to sit on the bench against Fulham, then so be it. That's what it's about. You've got to give the players that uh, that challenge of can I keep the share, can I play well enough to, to stay with the shares. And I know some people will be conflicting with that and go, no, it's whoever's the better player. I, I sort of get that. But if you think of a competitive side to that game, the competitive mindset for the players is they've got to believe if they perform that they can stay in the team. Got to. But uh, like I said, there is basic numbers. Let's dig in to the rest of his numbers. So I just thought I'd put this one up. The uh, His XG, this is rating from Sofa score there, 7.8. He was Everton's highest rated player. So there you go, not a bad man of the match choice from me. His XG, 0.03, the XG of that goal was. So, you know, it shows you the difficulty of where he was. Uh, situation off a corner. It was a left-footed shot high into the net. Um, absolutely brilliant strike. That's there's his heat map, uh, shot map rather. There's that's where he struck it from. You see there the angle of it. Uh, you know, difficult, difficult finish, but finished it absolutely brilliantly. Well, let's throw his offensive numbers on to start because that's what we've talked about. So let's have a look at them. Here we go. Nineteen minutes played for Michael Keane. Uh, one goal, 
expected XG, you know, 0.03 assists, zero. Next set, you just have one shot. No shots off target, no shots blocked, no dribbles attempted. Just a one shot. What accuracy that is. As Erlen Haaland got one, you know, 100% accuracy in a game like that. Um, he probably has because he scores a million goals. But Michael Keane, what a brilliant, brilliant goal. And, um, you know, one shot, one goal, arrowed into the roof of the net. Let's get him shooting more inside the box. That's what I say. Okay, let's get into this. He's a defender, isn't he? Let's get into the proper stuff for defenders. The defensive numbers from Michael Keane. Let's have a look at them. Here we can see seven clearances completed at the weekend. One block shot. He had one interception, one tackle. Wasn't dribbled past in the game, which is very good. Uh, ground duels, won 50% of his ground duels. This was one that surprised me. Went for two aerial duels, didn't win either of them. For like the size of them, so that's something maybe that he uh, can work on a bit. Uh, lost possession four times, fouls committed one, it wasn't fouled at all in the game. So a good, solid display from Michael Keane. I feel vindicated giving him man of the match. The goal clearly tipped them over, but uh, as you can see from the rest of his numbers, real solid numbers there. And listen, it's up to him now, isn't it? He's in the side. Does he stay in? That's a, a, a shown. Sean Dyke's call next week. He might look at Fulham and think they pose a different threat and it might be better suited to Jarrah Blantwaite. But all Michael Keane can do is when he gets his opportunity to try and stay in the team by taking it like that. And like I say, done himself no harm at the weekend. Brilliant goal. And in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, and you can give me different information if you want, I thought he deserved the L Man of the Match award. As always in this, I have another couple of notable mentions for players who I thought done quite well at the weekend. And the first one of them for me is Vitaly Michalenko. Listen, he's had injury issues already. He's He got injured, didn't he, in the derby back in April, that knee injury. And he's, he's had issues on and off since. But he was back in the side at the weekend. He obviously missed the nil-nil with Newcastle. Um, but he's come back into the side at the weekend, and I thought he, he put in a really good display for him, more like the Michalenko that we saw sort of last season. Listen, he's never, ever going to be this flying Luca Dean, Leighton Baines type left-back, but he is a very good defensive left-back. Let's have a look at Miko's numbers from the weekend. Here we go. 88% passing accuracy, uh, three tackles. He won 100% of his ground duels, three out of three there. Uh, blocked shots, one, and clearances, three. Uh, you can see his heat map there predominantly. Uh, on the left, of course, he is quite high up there as well, the main bit where it's the, the red uh, just inside the half. So you, obviously we'd like to see a bit more red at the other end. But he, don't forget he did. You know, he was instrumental in Everton's first goal, given that he was high up off the corner, stayed to put the pressure on Burns, I think it was, and uh, and Jai took it off him and just smashed it into the roof of the net through pressure from Micho. So I want to try to get him in those areas. But I thought he had a really solid game at the weekend. I think he was Everton's third highest rated player on uh, <coughs> Excuse me, a couple of the other statistic sites. So... Yeah, he had a good game. And then the other player I wanted to pick out is Dwight McNeil, who I thought had a very good game as well. Let's have a look at Dwight's numbers. Here we can see 88% passing accuracy. Had one assist. Uh, ground duels, three out of seven he won. Uh, one dribble he completed. Uh, and two key passes. And if you see his heat map there, pretty much all over the pitch. He is so much better playing off the striker. I've said many times for me, not really a left winger because he just he doesn't have the pace or the you know that dribbling ability over on that left hand side. I think the other thing that sort of means he doesn't really work out there is we don't have a flying left back. If we had someone who was constantly past them all the time, maybe you could get away with it. It give him that little bit of space. But I just think in that and I I, I said this last season. I was asking for him to be played in there if he was going to play last season. And I think what we're seeing, because he is in there now, we're seeing everything I thought he had when I mentioned it last year. A few people went with me and some people were against it. But I just think in those pockets of space, he's got that ability, he can see a pass. He's got a left foot that he, you know, he can strike a ball tremendously well if you can work any kind of space for him. 
he can get that shot away. And I just think he's more comfortable off the striker. Would we like him to be a bit more dynamic? Yeah, maybe. He is what he is. But he's a player who's got a lovely left foot. And I just feel like he can get involved more in the game in that central area. I think when you with your wide players, they have got to be direct and pacey for me. Or really intelligent dribblers of the ball. And then you also need flying fullbacks. It's the one thing this team doesn't have. It's one thing I hope Everton do sort of develop into. Um, get a couple of real, you know, fullbacks that can get beyond our wide players. But it is, that means for Dwight McNeil in that 10, there's a real opportunity for him in there. The irony is Illiman and Jai, most of his career has played in that 10 and done really well. But obviously, Sean Dyche is using him off the left-hand side. Again, he will benefit from a full-back going past him. But we're talking about Dwight McNeil. And I think in that number 10, in those pockets of space, the half space, as they call it, he's been really key for Everton. He's done really, really well. So long may that continue. Get more shots in, Dwight. That's what I would say. But he was he had a very good game at the weekend. So there are my two notable mentions from the weekend. Let me know what you think. Were you in agree agreement with me that Michael Keane was Everton's man of the match at the weekend? Did you think it was Tarkovsky or McNeil or whatever? Let me know in the comments section below. Give the video thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.